classroom. It's going to be a kind of two-part session where Kitten and I will start talking about uh, how we flip the part of the course in scientific communication. And then Alan is going to take over and talk a little bit about uh, assessments and learning. Okay? Um, we're going to start by talking a little bit about what we've done. Uh, but then we're going to give, sort of hand over to you guys. And all these whiteboards are going to be used so that you can think about how you might apply to a course of yours. Or if you've already flipped something, you could actually present what you did instead. Okay? So you're not just going to sit here the whole time. Okay? Um, I'm wondering if, could we just have a sort of quick, uh, quick uh, hands up for people who have actually flipped already? Have you already tried this sort of methodology? No. Nope. Okay. <coughs> not this many as I nope. hope, maybe. Um, <laughs> but uh, was it a good experience? Was it a positive experience? <laughs> Maybe. So, so. Okay. Um, some of you have already done this, and I know you're eating a sandwich, so it might be a little bit difficult, but it would be really great if you guys could uh, go on to menzi.com and the code there 55708. Just answer this question. Um, you know, what do you associate the flipped classroom with? And it asks you to just write three words or phrases. Anything that comes to mind. Yeah, we've got uh, some early early comers have already contributed, so we have nine responses already. One more? Two more? Still aging. that 
you can quickly move on to higher order thinking within the classroom. And I think for Hong Kong students, the other thing here is you've got the teacher right beside you. So you know the dead air that you get in the classroom when you ask students a question. They're much more likely to interact with you when you're there with them, working together in a group. So there's more, um, less uh, teacher directed, much more student -centered. And then of course there's the Okay, so some of the considerations when you're flipping, or what we found that was important to think about, is first of all, uh, what to flip, but also how to sell it, and then how to present it. So, obviously the first thing you have to do is choose a unit, an activity, whatever, how, however much it is. It could just be one activity or a lesson or a larger uh, part. Um, so something that is suitable, obviously, we found that we had a lot of input in a certain part of the course, and it was difficult to cover it all. And it made sense to put some of it uh, before the lesson to free up class time for, for other things, or, or for um, consolidation and uh, other deeper uh, activities. So also the fact that it's a it, ours was a third year course, so students had varying levels of uh, knowledge already, so this sort of even the playing field. They could access, use as much as they wanted. They could some weaker students could spend more time. Uh, students with more background knowledge didn't feel bored in class, and so on. Um, also, things that are suitable for independent study, um, suitable for online study. Um, what else? Um, yeah, things like that. The second point here, choosing a time in the semester, is not necessarily so much about choosing a time. It's like the time has really chosen us because once midterms are in progress and so on, students are really so busy that there's very little they're going to do at any time. You know, homework before or after class is not really something that's going to happen. So we found that earlier in the semester worked really, really well. Um, and then you'll obviously have to think about what kind of activities that you can give your students before class. So are there already materials available that you can use? And if not, is it possible for you to create them quite easily or do you have the support to create them? Um, and if you're doing this not just for yourself but for a group of teachers and you're going to put them on the LMS and clone the course, you can't, for example, use maybe a Padlet because the Padlet isn't clonable for 20 sections of the course, or at least not very easily. So you might want to use your LMS functions, but put something in the teacher's notes saying, this activity would be much nicer if you replaced it with a Padlet, for example. To, but that's up to the, the individual teachers. Um, and then also, it's not about just putting stuff before the class to get it out of the way. It should be linked meaningfully uh, in the face-to-face -face session. They should actually be connected. Otherwise, the students don't get the point. And I think that ties in very much to the second point, how to sell the flipped approach to students. Uh, we had, this is a big, big problem or consideration. And for us, at least, we were not able to allot any grades or marks for completion. So you might think, oh, nobody did it, right? But if, you, if it's linked properly, if the students actually see that there's a use to it, many of them will actually do the activities. And um, that is actually linked to the third point, how to present it. It's very important that everything is presented very clearly so the students know what's expected. You might demonstrate in class so that everything is really clear. And we did find that students actually completed the, the pre-class activities. The second point, if you are not flipping just for yourself, but for a group, how do you sell it to the teachers? Because there is, there is some resistance. You know, the students won't do it, so why should we flip? I'm going to stand there by myself in class, and the students are just going to sit there unprepared. Well, some of them are, 
but some of the students are always unprepared. You know, it doesn't matter what you do. So I think that's that's just something that happens. Um, also, one consideration is that if you're flipping, you might have to to say that this, these materials have to be done in a particular week. There's very little flexibility because. You need to do this before the class so that you can do this during the class and then follow up. And that could be something that you, know, you have to sell to teachers. Um, and then again, you consider how to present everything. And as I said before, it should be done very clearly so there's no confusion for the students. We put uh, something in the student notes and then everything is clearly presented in the, the LMS as well. And I think that's... Uh, very important. So I think that's moving on to, to our specific course. Okay, so this course um, that I'm a subject leader for, uh, we decided weeks three and six, and like Johanna said, it kind of was driven by the fact that we wanted to get it done sooner before midterm, so, and we couldn't, you can't start in week one because the students have to understand what the flipped class is all about. So you can't get them doing activities before they actually start the course. So we had week one, they were doing their first unit of work, and then week two, we introduced the flipped classes. So during week two, in preparation for week three, the students were doing, most of the students were doing the warm-up activities before they came to class in week three. So at the beginning of the semester, the assignment that we decided to flip is a group writing assignment. So they're writing a scientific report in a group. So one of my one of the main reasons for me wanting to flip was that when you think about writing together in a group, it, forget writing in a another language, but just writing with your colleagues in a group, once it gets more than two people, it's hard. You know, there are complex skills involved, and our students often complain about free riders. So by doing the writing part during class time, we can monitor that, we can help them, actually give them some skills of um, how to write the assessment in a group. So it was the second um, assessment that they did. Uh, like Johanna said, um, pre-class, we, we spend a lot of time deciding how to work this out. Um, we did a, a pilot during one semester and then followed up and said, why a yellow box? I don't know how we decided on a yellow box, but we did. Uh, we talked about doing a separate booklet with the flipped activities. We talked about all kinds of things, but in the end, we came up with this yellow box that sits in the student notes. So the unit before was just a, a unit of work. Well, now it's divided into four sections. Each section begins with a yellow box, and that <coughs> outlines what the students have to do before the class. So. This is the uh, I love the three. yellow box, but why the red text? <laughs> um, it's an instruction. Ah, okay. So that, that is the instruction. I don't know, do yeah. So that sits there, and it tells them to go to our, our LMS, which is Blackboard, and on their homepage, on the left-hand side, sits their flipped activity. So, Johanna yeah, included, um, there's a nice little section explaining to the students what a flipped class is, which we can also show them at the beginning um, of the course. And then there's their four weeks. So, this is week three, four, five, six. So, those are the activities that they need to do. So, student notes, blackboard, <coughs> and then in class, we've got, you see there's some consolidation activities. So in here, uh, there was the introduction. So when they get into class, we're assuming they've watched a video about the introduction. And here they're looking at the functions, identifying the functions. 
functions of the interaction. And then a lot of the class time is spent writing. So now they're writing, starting to write their introduction for their report. Um, and then, of course, after class, they continue to write. Okay, so that's overall, that's what it looks like. Didn't work. We were oh, sorry. Go. <laughs> uh, we were going to ask you what kind of pre-class activities you would think would be suitable for the flipped classroom. Some of ours are here, um, so I'm not going to listen. Oh no, you took them away! <laughs> excellent, excellent. So guys, let's start that again. So, what kind of pre-class activities do you think would be motivating for students to do? Achievable? What do you think? Any, anyone? In what context? <coughs> for this assessment or or any scientific? Classes. For any kind of, if you think of an EAP subject, you have some kind of materials. If you're going to flip it, what would you? What type of activity could you give the students to do beforehand that you think might be suitable? I think that's applicable to almost any topic. One that doesn't require the teacher setting next to that doesn't require like anything that's in anything that's in the notes, which doesn't require the teacher's presence, because that would be a waste of time during mm -hmm. the class. Absolutely. So anything that does require the teacher's presence should obviously be kept for the face-to-face -face session. Yeah. Video. Videos is the classic key question. Yeah. Videos is what you always see in the literature, right? You you either find a YouTube video or you make your own video. Uh, and you had that beforehand, yeah? Uh, asking them to search themselves for the information that they need. So instead of presenting it to them, ask them to search and find out what is a scientific report or the section. Sure. And then put that on discussion in the NMS. Yeah, and present that somehow online, yeah, forum or blog or something like that. Vocabulary yeah. activities for the new words that they're going to learn for that unit. Okay. Yeah. Like so how would you do that? So you would put an exercise, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So kind of group ice breaking exercise, so group members get to know each other, and if they're kind of loyal to the group and motivated, they're less likely to have a free ride problem. That's a really good idea, actually. Yeah. <coughs> um, I think whatever they do before, it helps if they've got some idea what, why they're doing it. So if there's some kind of purpose, you know, when they get to class, you'll have to present it, explain it, explain if you agree or disagree. Yeah. Maybe some informal group chat, um, such as on WeChat or mm -hmm. Line. Yeah. Some other social yeah. media. Yeah. Something they either watch or read and then discuss when they come to class yeah. uh, next week. Yeah. I think extending that further, if you watch or read something, there's maybe some informal comprehension quiz just to ensure that they've understood those mm -hmm. points, because if they still don't get it, then they can actually ask for yep. further yep. help in the classroom. And of course, the advantage to having a quiz or a forum or something that, like that is that the, the, instructor, the, the instructor can can check what students have written and check comprehension and see, is there anything that the students seem to have misunderstood? Any particular quiz questions that they've all failed, or anything that's odd in the, the blog posts? Or so these are just a selection of our activities. Uh, we actually had a couple of more that are YouTube videos followed by quizzes. That's a very sort of common. Uh, the literature often recommends a, a short video or a short text followed by some kind of quiz. Um, we thought that we wanted to not just have quizzes because it gets monotonous, so we also tossed in a couple of forums. Um, we found that the forums are very unpopular. The students really don't like it, they don't want to write anything, they, they think it feels more formal, like they have to write correct grammar. Um, they did say that, for example, like a Padlet post would be much, or is much better because it's more like a, a Twitter uh, comment or something like that, so they feel much more comfortable. But they, most of them prefer quizzes because it's so easy. Uh, we changed some of them to blogs in the second semester and that worked maybe a little better. That may be because of the, the Blackboard 
blog versus forum function, it's much easier to access other people's posts in the blog than in the forum. And that was one thing. The students didn't like making the effort if nobody else made the effort. So that's, even if they kind of like the idea, they don't do it if other people don't do it. Or they only do it once, and then they're so disappointed that they don't do it the next time. You've managed to, to get them to interact with each other. Because when I've done forums or discussions, they'll respond to me, mm, yeah. and then there'll be a new place they won't interact with each other. No, they didn't really. No. It's really quite poor sort of participation in, in the forums. Yeah. Um, when How could you encourage that? How could we encourage them to interact with each other more? By giving grades. For By giving grades. Couldn't yeah. you move <laughs> to the beginning of the class, <laughs> where they matter. where they get together as a group and then they can yeah. post as a group and then yeah. interact with other group members and, and give their own responses to other groups. Yeah. And then that would sort of be more anonymous. If yeah. you could make it anonymous, it would even be better. Because yeah. Anonymous posts tend to get. Well, for my students, yeah. they tend to yeah. post more and write yeah. more rather than yeah. they yeah. know what their, yeah. their name is known. Yeah. Well, going back to what I was saying just now, um, informal chat on social media. I mean, my students anyway. I, every semester I set up WeChat chat groups with my students. Mm -hmm. And more often than not, they, they tend to interact and communicate mm -hmm. with each other um, mm -hmm. through social media because they find that that's more informal, you know, not so academic. Mm -hmm. You know, oriented, so they, they like that. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't want to give students your contact detail. Would you? you wouldn't want to give them your phone number, for example. Alan, that's why I use well, Google Hangouts yeah, because you can you use your email. And actually, I use my my university email, and then the students can talk, contact me by that. I don't have yeah. to give my phone number, and that's one of the things I like about Hangouts compared to all the other ones. I don't have to give my personal mm -hmm. cell phone number. And you don't have to do that with social media either. You can always mask that. Oh, okay. Um, we did a couple of things also that was more like a genre analysis where they, they had to look at a, a journal article and identify sections and then post that in a, a forum or a blog or in the E there is focusing on a particular section rather than the whole thing. Uh, we're going to look at a couple of these uh, in a little bit more detail. Okay, so in the unit the unit two began with looking at sections of a report and like Tracy was saying, we felt that this was something the students didn't need the teacher for. It's, it's a lower order um, skill, it's just identifying and categorizing, so we flipped this bit. So this is what it originally looked like in the student notes. So pretty basic, you just um, identify the sections of so we took that and made it into a quiz. So online uh, warm-up activity scene was a quiz for the students to do. So that's done the fourth the class. So it's looking at, I think once you begin flipping your activities, you really start questioning, what do you need to teach them? Now these kind of things are so basic and they take time where you can be getting students to do higher order thinking. They can be analysing, they can be discussing and creating rather than just matching. So it's um, really thinking about those uh, kind of activities. This one was um, genre analysis. So very time consuming when you do this in the classroom, even though we put a time limit on it. The students spend ages trying to find an article and then, um, you know, it's simple questions. How many pages, how many sections, what are the headings? The only really slightly challenging question is a justification about why. So we took this one. And this one was a blog. So this is one student's an example of one of our good students. <laughs> it actually continues down there, you have to imagine that. <laughs> so um, looking at, they had to find their article. And I think I was quite surprised about the effort that the students actually put into doing this. Uh, Another one, this was from the methods section. So initially quite a bit of reading and 
you know when you have in the students notes just a whole lot of reading, it's kind of up to the teacher what you what you do with that, whether you ignore it, whether you present a little bit of it, how you present it. So a lot of language too, and if you're thinking the students are doing this before class without the teacher, so we really try to, um, some of it's not graded, but simplify a little bit. So initially there were nine areas, now there's six, so a little bit simpler. Um, this one was a ticket in the door. My favourite activity, Johanna came up with this idea, but I wanted to talk about it. Um, because I really liked it. A ticket in the door means the students have to do the work before they come to class. Otherwise they can't come to the classroom. And initially, I mean I'm a university teacher, I'm not a high school teacher. I was really concerned. I was thinking, I don't want to treat these kids like kids. But they loved it. They all stood outside the door with their <laughs> laptops ready and those that had done it, were all busy trying to get it, it done so they could come in the classroom. So it, it really worked and I did, I changed another activity ad lib uh, of all my activity, it was a reference, writing a reference that I had to do before class and I said I've decided we're going to do a ticket in the door for this one. The students just got up and walked out the door <laughs> and they stood there again with their laptops wanting to show, those that had done it, wanted to show me I'd done it, those that hadn't were quickly writing their references. So I'm not so afraid of the ticket in the door anymore. But the other reason this one I think worked particularly well was it matched so beautifully with what they came into the classroom to do. Um, it wasn't just a simple quiz. They had to do a little bit lower order thinking still because they were just looking at an article and pulling out and <coughs> So they didn't have to do any higher order thinking. Okay, then do you think that cooperation um, with something like that from students really also has something to do with the personality of the teachers? I mean, you and Johanna, obviously very animated, very amicable social individuals, <laughs> so it might work for you. Um, but <coughs> Yeah, we won't go. <laughs> well, for example, that's why the instructions for the students don't actually state if you haven't filled this out, you will not be allowed in the door because we felt we leave this to the teachers to actually decide because not everyone is comfortable yeah. with saying something like that. It may even be illegal. We made a suggestion in the student notes or the teacher's notes saying you might want to do this if you feel comfortable with it. Yeah. Or you might want to say those students who haven't done it, they have to sit in one side of the classroom and finish before they move over and join their groups. But so yeah. leaving some yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so this one, uh, feedback from the students and from the teachers, because we did um, you know, uh, focus group interviews and we did questionnaires after each of the 15 interviews, both semester one and semester two. Uh, so we got quite a lot of data and a lot of feedback and uh, the students liked it because, same reason as the teacher, they walked into the classroom with this information sat with their group, pulled it together, and wrote the method section. So I think this is a really good example of what I've looked. And we get, we're getting there. <laughs> we're getting there. We're still, you know, it's a work in progress. But I think this is the whole purpose of the flipped activity. They did all the thinking, the research, the finding the information, the putting it together, and then in class, they're ready to go. So. That was uh, so can I just ask a question? So, like, at the beginning when we had the words up, like people wrote down what three words, like one of the big words was homework. And I'm just suddenly wondering, like, would this still be a flipped approach if you had taken those entries <coughs> that were in the student notes? At, at, and okay, you, you, you change them into some kind of online quiz or a video or something like this, right? They need to online. Would this still be a flipped approach if you just told them, 
going to, to do, do this activity in the student notes because in the lesson next week we're, you're going to need to have covered this. But it's the same thing, right? It's, is it flipped just because we made it online or is it flipped because basically you gave them the homework to do before the lesson? It's the homework before the lesson. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's the homework. I, I think so would I still be flipping my classroom if I said, okay guys, next week I want you to do the homework before the lesson. Do page 60 from your student notes. It's not exactly new to physics. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's just teaching. You know? yeah. And I think it, it originated, the whole idea originated, I can't remember the two people, but because these students couldn't attend the class. So they were missing, the students were missing from a lot of the class, so the teacher videotaped the lesson so that the students could watch the lesson before they could attend any of the, mm -hmm. of the classes. So I think that, yes, but it's, when you do a flipped approach like this, it's consistent. So you might get students to do a homework activity before the class, but in this one it's kind of formalised which is the only difference. And I think that if, um, nowadays to get students buy in the online, you know, it has to be. And we've, we've struggled, and my initial reaction was students is not, are not gonna do this. They're not gonna do it, we're giving them no grades. Why would they do all this work before class? But I think students eventually come into the classroom and feel lost. Now those that haven't done it, uh, ooh, what are we doing? What's that? What are, you know, so eventually they get it. And the other thing one of our teachers did was did a, a pop disc. Just a kahoot. So students come in, they sit down, and the teacher did a kahoot based on what they were supposed to have done. The students loved it. And they had the jazz of music. So that was a Anyway, next one. So this is the last one we're going to talk about, and that's mostly because I wanted to, to add panopto a little bit. Um, so this was about the discussion and conclusion section of a report, and in the original materials it started with some text about what should be in the discussion, and then later on also the different functions of the conclusion. And there are also, what you can see here, a lot of language input, about uh, hedging language, for example. And we found two really great YouTube videos, both about the content, uh, one about the content and one about the language, but they were really very long. And, you know, the, the, the literature says about 10 minutes per video. I would say 10 minutes is too long. You know, and always tell your students you can uh, increase the speed, you know, if you listen carefully and you can do it in five. Um, but so anyway, we kind of felt we have to condense this. So we just made a narrated PowerPoint video and Adam is probably despairing because they're not quite up to ELC standards, but they work. Um, and the first time we hosted it um, uh, on YouTube and had a forum following, and it was really, really poorly received by the students. They didn't like it at all. Um, so we thought, well, what should we do? And we wanted to resist just turning everything into a quiz, which is what the students want. So uh, we put it in uh, Panopto instead and changed uh, have you guys used Panopto? What is Panopto? <laughs> I'll answer this question again. It's sort of a, a platform for hosting videos. It's a YouTube for universities. Polyu uses it. Polyu uses it, and CityU has it too, I know, but uh, I don't know. Do I need to log in again? Again, the two last sections. Oh. Okay, so the, here it starts, but you can see what, what we do is you click here and you have a running discussion on the side of the video. I would kind of like it if, if the comments popped up in the minute, because the minute here is the minute of the video that the, where the comment is made, and I would you know, prefer if it only appeared then. But you, know, you have a running commentary, and I think this was really motivating for the students. And all of the students in the different sections write in the same forum. And then we as teachers would go and sort of respond to, to comments. And the feedback from the students in this semester, it got much, much uh, better sort of ratings. They really liked it, even though not all of them participated. But they enjoyed seeing other people's comments and feeling that they were really part of a sort of little community. So I think 
that was that was it for us. We wanted now to ask you guys to do something, and we've got three options. One option is if you have colleagues here who are teaching the same course as you, you might want to think about is there anything in this course that we want to flip? How could we flip it? Um, if you've already flipped something, maybe you just want to present briefly what you did. Or, in the middle, if, you, if you're just sitting randomly or you want to just do something. We've got some materials, <laughs> very kindly, uh, lent to us from random. a, a different course. It's a, a course in sort of EA, EAP rather than uh, scientific communication. We just took a, a little section on citation. So we can give you a little handout that you could use as a base. So just think about what, which part would we flip, what kind of activity could we have, what would it be followed up by in the class. <coughs> I'm not going to give you like strict instructions, just see what you come up with. We have, I think, room for three groups in the back. We have two small whiteboards here, and somebody could write here. So I think we could have six groups. How many people? One, two, three. About 28. 28? Maths? Please, Adam? What? Can you divide? <laughs> <laughs> five? Four or five? Four. Four or five in a group. So, if anybody has colleagues that they want to work with on something, just grab them and make a group. Um, and if not, see if you can make your own groups, or otherwise I'll do, you know, I'll be the teacher and put you in a group. Um, and we thought if we give you ten minutes to brainstorm, maybe five minutes to then go and write something on uh, somewhere, and then we'll just do a sort of like circulate and sort of look at what people do. Okay? There are six sandwiches. If you haven't ordered a sandwich and you're hungry, come and put this on. Put this on. Put this on. Uh, the classroom section of there. Quite useful uh, website which I found uh, before we did this actually. But anyway, these are two local resources, so I thought I'd sort of uh, promote those. Um, there's obviously lots of stuff out there. Um, and if you go to the, the hub community side, you'll find these two people on there. Okay. Already. Okay, wonderful. Um, and just very, very briefly, we had really quite good feedback from students um, and teachers. Um, students tend to like the flipped approach, even if they don't necessarily do all the work. They're generally quite positive. Uh, so I think it's worth trying um, if you think there's a reason for it in your materials. Do you want to add anything? Uh, just uh, one comment from a teacher. She said during an interview, <laughs> um, the students have me, and I think that was a really nice quote, so that rather than being up here and removed, that during the first time, the teacher is with the students, and uh, just wish you all the best, and I'd just like to right before you finish that big thank you to you, Johanna, for all the work that she's done on the materials <coughs> development with such passion for this course. <laughs> and also her husband, who has done the voice for some of our videos.